But before we get into anything else, and this is really something that isn't a great topic for open mic, but I have got to talk about this because I'm just going to burst uh, if I don't talk about this. Now, you guys will remember that uh, yesterday on the John Campy show, because I got a lot of people asking about it, I decided to discuss and address the situation going on at Collider, the place I started, at least the, the video side of it, um, and, uh, and left a number of years ago. And, you know, I tried to be as diplomatic, I tried to be as fair, and quite frankly, I try to be as supportive of, as possible. I call things for what they are. I also said, hey, from a business point of view, I get it. Uh, and if you guys saw my video yesterday, I think you may have liked what I said. You may have not liked what I said. But I think what we can all agree on, at least I hope, is that I tried to at least be fair. I tried to at least be fair and say, you know, they're going to go in a certain direction and, and whatever, and that's cool, that's fine. Yeah, maybe they should have let everybody have one farewell episode. Yeah, they probably should have given their talent who have poured blood, sweat, and tears in that place more than one hour's notice before dumping them and telling the rest of the world that their show got canceled just an hour after they... Okay, yeah, I, but I said that. I said that, but I also said, you know, hey, they want to go in a new direction. That's their prerogative. It's their thing. And let's see what they do. And maybe it'll be great. And maybe it'll be awesome. And yay, team. Yay, team. And, and I, I, I tried. Now, I want to be very clear about something here. From the day that I left Collider, I never once spoke about them. And the re one of the reasons, one of the reasons that I never spoke about anything going on over at Collider and, and whatnot and everything is because, partially because people online love drama and no matter what I said, like I would even avoid saying the name Collider. I would say the place I used to work because I know that anything I said about Collider, somebody would take and twist in a negative way, no matter what. I could have said, hey, Collider is starting a fund to help orphan seals in the world. I could have said something great like that, and somebody would have found some way to twist it and make it look negative and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, you know, for years, I just never said a thing. I, it just, you know what? I, I never said a thing. A lot of stuff went on over there. I always just completely kept my mouth shut. I said, nope, that's that's not my place to get involved there. I'm not going to say anything. I'm, I'm not going to reference anybody there. I'm not going to say anything. And I stayed absolutely quiet for two and a half years until yesterday. And yesterday, I, I tried to still be very fair. And I thought I was very even-handed and I thought I was fair. But I cannot not say something about this. This is something I cannot stay quiet on. Now, there is a little dick weasel that works over at Collider by the name of Jack Hind. I've never met this kid. I've never met this infant, this child who knows nothing. I've never met this kid. All right. So I, I have no, I've never had any opinion about him. I, I just don't, never had any opinion about him. So yesterday, on the heels of Collider, which again, as I said yesterday, they made some decisions that they wanted to make for their own company. That's within their right. Let's see what happens, blah, blah, blah. But after canceling all the shows that made Collider what it is, Guess what? Nobody knows the fucking name Collider Video if it wasn't for all those people and all those shows and that community that was built and 600,000 subscribers later, none of that exists. And this rolling around in his diapers Jack Hind dick zit wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for all those things. All right? But they pulled the plug on it. Okay, new direction. I get it. It happens. Fine. This jackass, this insufferable little fucktwit gets on Twitter yesterday, and I'm going to show you what this kid, now this kid, Jack Hind, he is the number two guy from everything that I'm told, 
He is the number two guy over at Collider. He is the number two guy over at Collider, okay? Other than the big guy who owns it, next, the most influential guy over there is this kid, Jack Hind, who I don't even know if he's reached puberty yet. But there was an event yesterday because we Collider's decided to go in the direction of celebrity bullshit. Fine. They have this event. Apparently, it was a very nice event. And what this individual decided to tweet out, I, I was at a loss for words. Here's what it was. Now, Scott Mance, who, by the way, just to be clear, I was just talking on the phone with Scott Mance about a week ago. I have all the respect in the world for Scott Mance. I love Scott Mance. Let's just be clear about it. This, this is nothing to do with Scott. Scott's a wonderful individual. I have all the respect in the world for Scott Mance. Scott Mance very excitedly tweets out this thing about how he did this Q&A with the, with the cast of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, part of the uh, four-year consideration uh, Collider show that they're doing, which is awesome. That's great. Fantastic. By the way, just so you know, the last episode, I had some people writing to me to point this out. The last episode of Jedi Council on that show has more views than every episode of For Your Consideration put together. Just want to put that out there. But on top of this great positive thing that Scott Mance puts out, the sharing this great fun moment and all that kind of stuff, wonderful tweet that he put out. This number two guy, this leader over Collider, on the day that they announce that they've canceled all these shows that made Collider what it is, at least Collider video, he decides to take a swing at everybody who's ever worked on any of those shows and any fan who has ever followed any of those shows when he said the following. I wonder why Collider chose to focus their resources on industry professional content and not daily movie commentary and fart jokes. This is the number two guy at Collider. All right? And it's he better thank whatever fucking God he worships that I wasn't there. But this insufferable jackass writes, on a day that people lost their jobs and that fans lost content that they've been following for years, Content that built that place into what it is and the only reason this moron's got a job and how he has this job, I have no idea. He writes, gosh, I threw in the gosh myself, just to be clear. I wonder why Collider chose to focus their resources on industry professional content and not daily movie commentary and fart jokes. Let me get back into that in a minute. Another individual who took issue with what Jack Hind, number two guy at Collider, had to say. Another individual who took issue with what he had to say was a former staff member over there, Ken Knapsack. Now, I, I haven't spoken to Ken Knapsack. I just, I'm not, I'm not like, I'm, I'm not just trying to jump to Ken Knapsack's thing. He's, he's a big guy. He can take care of himself. But Ken Napsok was called it to task, called this quote to task. Ken referring to what Jack just did is dancing on the graves of people who just lost their jobs and lost their health insurance and whatever. And, and listen, by the way, let me re rephrase here again. Let me, let me point out again. Hard decisions need to be made in business. Hard decisions need to be made in business sometimes. I've been a leader. I've had to make unpopular decisions. I've had to say unpopular things. I've had to do unpopular things that sometimes rub, rub people the wrong way. I've sometimes had to take people's jobs away. I've sometimes, I mean, you, when, when you're in leadership, sometimes you need to do the hard thing. I get it. And I, if you saw my video yesterday, I don't blame them for that. But then coming out that day and unprovokedly writing nonsense like this, anyway, Ken Napsok decided to call him out on it. And in response, Jack Hind wrote the following. 
Sorry the daily shows and the weekly shows you were all on did not perform well enough to stay around. It sucks. It really does. But the YouTube community didn't support you in the channel only now once it's gone. I read this. I read this and I'm like, this can't be real. This, this cannot be real. And then, and you'll have to forgive me because I didn't pull a sque- screenshot of it. This Jack Hine kid later on goes on to say, huh, you know, it's just that all these so-called fans getting mad at us now, getting mad at us now. Why weren't they thanking us that we kept this content on as long as we did? Why weren't they thanking you? Why weren't the fans and the movie fan community who built that place who are the reason that place exists, who are the reason you have a job and you're sitting there lamenting out loud that they should be thanking you. And I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to call you out right. I'm going to call right now. I was texting back and forth this morning with Mark Fernandez and I, and I, I might be getting one or two of the words wrong here, but basically what I said was, dude, this says a lot about your company that you have a moron with clearly no experience no wisdom, and no discernment whatsoever working on your staff. Now, I'm not going to tell you what Mark wrote and replied to me because I'll leave that between Mark and Jack. I'll let Mark and Jack work that out themselves. But I'm like, this speaks volumes about your company, that you've got a guy with no experience, no intelligence, clearly no wisdom, and clearly no discernment publicly representing your company. He's your number two guy. I would like to remind Jack Hind about a couple of things. I'd like to remind this insignificant little dick zit about a couple of little things here. First of all, this movie commentary and fart jokes. You want to know what Collider video was? Before it was for before those commentary and fart joke shows, you want to know what Collider Video was? It was this pathetic little YouTube presence that did nothing but post movie trailers, posted movie trailers and film clips from other movies. That's all it was. It was a click once and then leave kind of content. And I remember when Complex was courting me to come over there. We were talking about me bringing everything over to to Complex. And I sat down with one of the vice presidents, senior vice president of the company. And he was like, wow, these videos get views, like trailers and trailer clips. I said, yes, but let's dive into the analytics. How many people are actually subscribing to the channel as a result of watching these individual videos? And we went through them and it was nil. Nobody was subscribing to the channel because... That type of content, while maybe getting you a couple of cheap clicks, it does not develop community. And it doesn't develop brand loyalty. And it doesn't develop brand identification. It it breeds none of that. It's a quick click on a link and then disappear, and they won't even know the name of the YouTube channel that did it. And I sat down with the vice president of Complex and walked him through all the analytics and pointed out. And then I pointed them out to some other little videos that had smaller views, but had a massively higher subscription rate that people would click on subscribe as a result of watching those videos. And they were videos that that cultivated and nurtured brand loyalty, brand identity, and community. Community. These little commentary and fart joke shows, as this moron puts it, establish Collider Video as a major name. People like Christian Harloff and Mark Ellis and John Schnepp and infinite numbers of others who work their asses off to make those commentary and fart joke shows built the foundation of of the playground you now get to play in. You get to play in the playground and in the ballpark that those people built. You insufferable, ungrateful little piece of shit. 
You should be on your hands and fucking knees thanking whatever God you worship that those commentary and fart joke shows were around to give you a place to have the job that you gave you the opportunity to run it all into the ground. And by the way, let's talk about that for a second too. Talking about this whole thing about, oh, the fans should be grateful that we kept these shows around as long as we did. And, oh, sorry that the, the shows you were on, Ken, that, that the people didn't watch them. I'll tell you what right now. As I sat back here from a distance watching this place that I had developed and built slowly over two years run headfirst into the ground, I'll tell you what one thing I always knew was never the problem. It wasn't the talent. It wasn't the talent. And I would sit there all the time and go to my wife. Oh my God, you should see what they're doing over there now. They're doing this to the show and they're doing that to the show. And they did this and they did this and they did this. And it was never about the talent. It was never about the talent. You guys took a hundred plus thousand view a day commentary and fart joke show. And you ran it into the ground. You burned it with some of the most mind-boggling, butt-fuck stupid decisions I could possibly imagine. And I have sat here for two and a half years and kept my mouth shut about it. I've never talked about any individuals, and I still won't, other than this fool. I've never talked about it. I never brought it up. Never said it. Tried to be supportive. And I never spoke one bad word about any individual there. Not one bad word did I ever get on a public forum and ever in two and a half years did I say one negative thing about anybody there. And now you, the leader of that place, you come out here and you throw those people under the bus the day and the day after they lost their jobs and they lost their shows. You spit in the face of the fans who supported this show from when it was 100,000 views a day all the way down to even after you ran it into the ground and we're still there and we're still faithful and you spit in their face again? Let me tell you something about this new direction you're going in, all right? Let me tell you something about where, where's this fucking idiotic thing this dude said. Here we go. Let's talk about this. And I wonder... Why Collider chose to focus on their re all their resources on industry professional content. Industry professional content. Slapping George Lucas's face on, on, on an actor. Doing some 2007 jokes. That's professional industry content. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. And I mean this wholeheartedly. The first couple of those deep fake videos weren't just good. They were fucking great. They were fucking great. Make no mistake about them. They were funny and creative and whatever. And it was great. And we, I remember me and a couple of friends watched them like, oh my God, these are amazing. Those were, that was such a good job. Well done. And so, and just like a rat that finds its ways through a maze, it's like, oh, that worked. Oh, let's do it again. And 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 it's getting real tired real fast. And guess what? The novelty of this whole thing is going to wear off. And by the way, the deep fake stuff, six months to a year from now, every kid in their mom's basement is going to have software that can do it. There's already a bunch of other YouTube channels that are built on deep fake that do it much more successfully and better. And it's just going to become more and more dominant as more and more kids. It's going to be like in the 90s when web design used to be a big professional thing. Then every kid in the world had the tools to build websites. That's what's going to happen with the deep fake stuff. And let's talk more about this professional industry content. Celebrity shit is fog. It's fog. Let's wait and see how many views. I, I mean, look, I, I might be totally wrong. We may find out that this whole... Um, once upon a time in Hollywood event that they did, and I'm sure because Scott rules at this stuff, I'm sure Scott Mance knocked it out of the park. Maybe that view, maybe that little video will get half a million views. Maybe it will. I'm guessing it won't. And look, as I said, I don't mind that they made the company made a decision for themselves that they wanted to go in a new direction. That's fine. 
But when you come out publicly and start shitting on all the work that came before that puts you in a position that you could even do this stuff and you shit on all the audience who, oh, you must have been stupid to watch these commentary and fart joke shows. You spit in the face of the fans. You spit in the face of those who built a community. See, all this shit that you're trying to do right now, it's all empty calorie clicks. That's all it is. Celebrity bullshit, this deep fake nonsense. It's all great if it's just, an, if it's just accents to your core foundation. Celebrity stuff is fine. Deep fake that stuff can be really good if it's accents to your core foundation and your core foundation needs to build brand loyalty, build brand identification and build community, build community. This accent stuff doesn't do any of those things. They are just like back in the day when all the Collider YouTube channel was, was throwing up studios trailers. It's empty clicks that didn't create any engagement, created no brand loyalty, and created no community. Collider Video has been blessed for the last number of years of having a loyal community. And even a segment of that community that stayed loyal as you drove the programming deep into the grave. When you misused incredibly talented people, you didn't properly support incredibly talented people, you didn't properly leverage incredibly talented people and put them in the best positions to succeed or surround them with the right talent to accentuate they had and instead you're constantly changing everything about it, swapping chairs in and out, move them into the studio that has the audio quality of an eighth grade empty gym class. I mean, you, I could go on and on and on and on and on. But all this nonsense you're building right now, none of it builds brand loyalty, none of it builds brand identification, and ain't none of it builds community. It's great as accent stuff to other programming that it does. You want to go that direction? That's perfectly fine. That's within your purview to do it. But how dare you shit on the work that so many people had done to build that place and give you an opportunity to even make these stupid decisions? It's insufferable. It's insufferable. And I've sat on this. I, I, I just, I, I have no idea how Collider has somebody who's in a power position like this, who clearly has no common sense, has no discernment, and clearly has no wisdom. And look, we all do and say stupid things. You guys know I will do and say stupid things. You do and say stupid things. It happens. But on the day that people lose their jobs, on the day that you've taken away core foundational shows that built that place with a loyal fan base who stuck in there even when you ran into the ground, on that day to come out and make comments like this, on that day, to respond to a guy who was a loyal soldier over there in a Ken Knapsack and respond to him with this sort of smugness. I'm sorry, you and I will take one. I will take one Ken Knapsack over an army of dick zits like Jack Hind. Hind, Hind, whatever the fuck his stupid name is. I'll take I'll take one Ken Knapsack over that. Anyway, um, this uh, wasn't meant to be a big long rant video, but I I saw that and I I don't know. Now clearly, let's not be facetious. Clearly, I also take this personally. Clearly, I also take this personally. I'm not going to pretend that I don't. It's like, guess what, kid? You've got a job because of what I fucking built. So don't you get online and start talking shit about that stuff. You should be thanking Ken Knapsack. You should be thanking Christian Harloff. You should be thanking all those people, Perry Nemiroff. And every, you should be thanking all these people. Thank you so much. 
You should take your hat in your hand, get on your fucking knees, and you should say thank you so much for building this place to what it is. Thank you so much for building this place so I can even have a job here to take it in a different direction if that's what I want to do. So instead of running your stupid mouth, shut your mouth, know your role, get on your hands and knees, and you fucking thank those people. Anyway. Anyway. So... With that complete meltdown, I tell you what, I went to the gym this morning with Ann. Ann and I went to the gym this morning and she was like, you are so distracted. I'm like, honey, you have no idea. I like, well, she knew what was going on. I was just, I've been, it's just been boiling in my head all day that, that something that stupid uh, would be said. And it's, it's, it's infuriating. Oh my God, it's infuriating. But uh, anyway, with all that down, guys, let's get to what matters. Not John's little meltdown. Who cares about John's little whine, bitch, and moan session? There, I got my whining and bitching and moaning out of the way. So my little cry boo-hoo session is out of the way. But I'm going to, sorry, let me throw in one more thing here. Let me throw in one more thing. This little thing they seem to devalue so much. You look around the interweb. You look around the interweb. There's a lot of different places that understand the value of building community. Hell, even like the, the, the Star Wars, you know, hating sites and stuff like that, they understand the value of community. It's built on community. And we can have communities online that have vastly different points of view and vastly different things and we can disagree and we can never, but even at least at the foundation, all those sides, including those sides, understand the value and importance of community and what building that can do for a brand. For you to spit in the face of everybody. Anyway. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, fuck that guy. All right. Let's.